Alrighty, you guys. It's time. Time for me to get off my lazy butt and actually make these videos. Just sort of realize I have to be in the chair to make these videos. Um, cue the intro! Oh, intro's over already? <laughs> okay, oops, sorry. Anyway, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> All you people out there in YouTube land and beyond, if for some reason you're watching this somewhere else, in which case, how are you doing that? But anyway, Jake, the One Man Band is back again, giving you guys another Ruby in-depth look. And since we are in the off-season of Ruby at this moment, going to be doing a lot of theories, a lot of just big theoretical thinking on all these characters and scenarios and all that cool stuff. Well, you already know that if you've been watching my stuff, and if you haven't been watching my stuff, well, where have you been? But anyway, in this video, we're going to be looking back to one of the probably coolest characters introduced in Volume 2 of Ruby, Neo. Now, what can we really say about Neo? I mean, she's probably the most unexplained new person to be introduced in Volume 2. I mean, she doesn't even have a voice, and she gets maybe like five minutes of screen time. And I'm being generous with that. I mean, what can really be said about Neo just by looking at her? I mean, she has the multiple color thing going on, like the Neapolitan ice cream that she is uh, partly based off of, you know, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, all that kind of good stuff. And she's extremely short. Like, I think the height ratio that Monty Ulm put out put her at about 4'9". Man, I'd be looking almost straight down if I met her. But in my opinion, that just adds to her charm. Because here is this character who almost looks... Who, she, who really just explodes with the whole anime craziness that anime characters can get. I mean, she has a multiple hair color thing, different eye colors, and, I mean, she doesn't speak in Volume 2, at least. And all her emotional givings out are just through, like, her body movements and her facial expressions, which is just brilliant. Super cool! But enough about me just gushing over Neo's awesome just character design and pretty much awesome status in the show. Let's get to inspirations. So, if maybe you've watched my previous video on Neo, you know, annotation gonna be somewhere. Probably over in that vicinity, I think. I think that's it. Or I'm just pointing the completely wrong direction, in which case it's that way. One or the other. But anyway, if you watch that video, you'll hear me state a lot of things like, Neo is inspired by Napoleon. Why is that? Well, there's the whole height thing. But also, Napoleon, Neapolitan, sounds similar. Yeah! But not only the similarities between the words Napoleon and Neapolitan, but also her whole semblance. Her semblance has been stated to be illusion. And if you know anything about Napoleon as the great general, that's, that was one of his fortes in his strategies. He would give the illusion that his forces were losing, thus forcing the enemies into a trap and then destroying them. He was like the champion! of military illusions, and probably still is. And for all you people who are still thinking that she's based off Mary Poppins, no. No, I'm still refusing to believe that. As, as soon as she starts singing a spoonful of sugar, it will help the medicine go down, then I'll believe you. Yet here's another example for Neo's inspiration. Alright, first of all, let's look at Neo's design. She has the whole 
umbrella, parasol thing, as well as multiple eye color, the different uh, color schemes in her clothing. Monty Ulm has gone on record to say that she is based off of a gender-bent idea of Roman Torchwick, but with a little bit more inspiration sprinkled in. Now, through my own uh, research and research done by a really awesome friend, mind you, we've come to the conclusion that Neo also shares a lot of similarities with Kogasa Tatara. And if you don't know who that is, it's a Toho character. Toho Project, go look it up. It's really big stuff going on. And yes, there may be some bias on my account on that whole inspiration, but let's go ahead and take a look at both these characters next to each other. Okay, first of all, they're both ladies. Second of all, they both wield umbrellas. And second of all, both eyes on each character are a different color. But not only that, there's also one other part about Kogasa... Tatara that really drives home this whole idea. What I'm talking about is the old Japanese uh, mythological creature, the Kasa Obake. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize for if I'm just doing it terribly. But basically, what is this thing? It's basically a sentient umbrella that has been possessed by mischievous spirits. And basically, it's a prankster. It likes to go around and mess with things. And what have we seen from Neo's behavior? Well, not only is she maybe somewhat crazy, but she also seems to get pleasure from just messing with people, as we saw from her fight with Yang. So, did some inspiration from this crazy umbrella uh, congregate into Neo? I don't, I don't freaking know, I'm not one of the creators of Ruby, but it's really a something to think about, and I, at least, believe that there are similarities between these two. I mean, umbrellas, umbrellas! Alrighty, now on to the whole where does Neo fit into the Ruby universe and story! It's a lot of quotes. Now, we do know that Neo is working with Roman Torchwick. She's his partner. Now, whether she's his partner by force or by uh, volunteering, you know, is up in the air. We're not really sure. I mean, yeah, she does seem to have some form of loyalty to Roman Torchwick, but hey, he just may be some jerk who at least gave her the time of day, and she now follows him even though she knows what she's doing is wrong. We don't really know all that much about her. I mean, because of one, she hasn't really talked, and two, five minutes of screen time, like I said before. But another interesting aspect to think about Neo is that throughout her screen time, her eye colors actually change. Now, whether this was a mistake in the post-production, it may be, but I highly doubt that, and if you know anything about me, you know that nothing happens for no reason in my eye. The creators and animators of Ruby wanted this eye changing to distinctly happen, and why they wanted it to happen? Well, we're not really sure, but that's why we're theorizing. And the theory that I most believe is the whole thought that Neo has some form of multiple personality disorder. And whenever her eyes change color, that's when one of the many personalities takes control. Now, going off my own research and some research done by friends, and then us collaborating, we've come up with pretty much a basic understanding on what her different eye colors would translate into personalities. Alright, one, we got when both eyes are white, now, we really only see this is when Raven comes in to save Yang at the end of Neo and Yang's fight, when she has that complete and utter look of shock on her face. That's her base personality, where she's the most uh, lenient, maybe even a little timid, and, and that's the personality that doesn't really want any trouble with anyone. Thus is why she ran away. When both of her eyes are brown, she's just pretty mellow by the when we actually see her with both of her eyes brown she doesn't really seem to be interacting with anyone really taking notice of anything and it just looks like she's just bored 
So maybe when both of her eyes are brown, she's just kind of like in a bored state where she doesn't really matter and doesn't really care what happens. Now when one eye is brown and one eye is white, that's when she's a little bit crazy, especially during her duel with uh, Yang. One eye is white, one eye is brown, and that's kind of a dual personality thing going on. I mean, white is kind of simulation of purity, brown is close to black, which is normally considered like, oh, dark evil color. So, when so they're kind of fighting each other, if you really want to put it in that way. And she's just kind of psycho during that time. You know, she takes pleasure from j just messing with people and from just fighting and hurting other people. I mean, who really knows? And then when one eye is brown and one eye is pink, that's when she's just kind of messing around. She just want to mess with people during that time. Why? I don't freaking know. I ain't no psychiatrist. But pretty much from the research, that's what it's been really pointing to. And of course, I may have missed something during this research, so if you guys notice anything more, hear anything more, I want to see that stuff down in the comments, because I love it. Now, what's going to happen with Neo in the future of Ruby? Now, we know that she has some form of connection to Roman Torchwick, and now that Roman Torchwick is in prison, she may be the one to come and bust him out. I mean, she doesn't seem like one to be in charge of really anything. She seems to be more of a follower and a fighter rather than a leader or a charismatic talking man like Roman. So maybe she needs Roman to function in society. Like, he is kind of the person that deals with everything while she kind of just stands in his shadow. If it puts it in any other perspective, try to think of the Joker and Harley Quinn. How Harley Quinn is basically just not functionable when she's not with the Joker. It could be something along those lines, but who knows, maybe she's just completely and utterly able to take care of herself and she doesn't really care that he's in prison at the moment. But that doesn't make for a good story, now does it? Now on the subject of Neo being mute, I do think that that's a good idea and I thought that it'd be cool to implement a character that would use sign language, especially with the uh, motion capture system that the Team Ruby uses. How they could intricately get like the, the hand gestures and all that stuff done. But on the Ruby Wiki, it did state that Grey Haddock confirmed that they did have a voice actress picked out for Neo. But then, but then again, when has a wiki page truly been 100% correct? Yeah. But as we know, Rooster Teeth is a production company that loves its community and loves its fans, and its community and its fans have been known to change things in stories. I mean, Adam came back. That wasn't really planned. Unless they were lying to us. But on the realm of me, I am totally ecstatic to see more of Neo coming up in the future. I mean, like I said before, if I saw any Neo cosplayers, I'd just, like, hug them. I'd just be like, oh yeah, so awesome. I mean, how can you not love Neo? She just looks so cute. I mean, of course, every single character in Ruby looks cute. But, I mean, it's probably just the whole height thing. I mean, small. In, to my, in my mind, it just instantly equals cute. But then again, she does pay homage and follow probably one of the wackiest and fabulous villain ever. But we'll have to save that for next time. Hey everybody, uh, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a long time since I put out any Ruby stuff, and a lot of Ruby stuff is going to be coming your way in the following months when I just kick it into overdrive and bring all this awesome stuff to you. I mean, I got a lot of videos planned. I got to make a lot, and I only have like about eight months until next RTX to do them, so... Anyway, if you've enjoyed, like and favorite, and if you are really feeling generous, why don't you go and hit that subscribe button down there. That way you can keep up in all my shenanigans and videos that are going to be coming out in the future. But until then, this is Jake of the One Man Band signing off. Be a nice person, tip your waitresses, and I'll see you guys next time out there in YouTube land. Stay awesome. Yeah, yeah.